Hi, today we are going to talk about number systems. We are all aware as to what a number line is. A number line is a representation of numbers on a straight line, which, which stretches to infinity on both sides. Now we will start with some definitions. First, take all the numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. from the number line. What do you get? This set of numbers is called natural numbers. And they are represented by capital N. Now if you add 0 to this group of numbers, that is if you consider the group 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc you get what is called a set of whole numbers that is natural numbers and the number zero together make up what are called whole numbers they are represented by capital W now if you consider all the negative numbers that are possible that is from minus infinity to say minus three minus two minus one and also consider all the whole numbers that is 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. You get a set which is called the set of integers which is represented by the number z. So to recap 1, 2, 3, etc. is given by natural numbers represented by capital N. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc represent whole numbers given by W and if you include all the negative numbers possible uh, like minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, 0, 1, 2, 3 you get integers represented by Z. Now if you take out all of these numbers from the number line the question is are there any numbers that still remain? The answer is yes. One set of those numbers is called rational numbers. As you might have guessed because say numbers like half or 1 by 3 are not in any of these sets obviously there must be some numbers left over in the number line. Now coincidentally half and 1 by 3 belong to a set which is called rational numbers and the definition of rational numbers is given by a number which can be represented in the form p by q where q is necessarily not equal to 0 because a division by 0 is not allowed in mathematics. Now to give you an example of what would constitute a rational number it would be say 3 by 5, 4 by 3, say 7 by 9 also keep in mind that numbers like 25 are rational numbers. Why? Because 25 can be written as 25 by minus 1. Sorry, 25 by plus 1. And also if you want to consider say minus 25, this also happens to be a rational number because it can be written as minus 25 by plus 1. So and if you want to consider 0, you have 0 which can be written as 0 by 1. So therefore, all these numbers which are, which are commonly called fractions and the set of whole numbers, sorry, the set of uh, integers together constitute what we call rational numbers. Now, if you wish to find, say, 5 rational numbers, between 1 and 2. This is how you would go about it. There are many ways to do this but one way to do this would be to take 1 and 2 get the difference that is 2 minus 1 which will be 1 divide that by 1 plus the number of rational numbers you require that is 1 divided by 5 plus 1. So 
So therefore, your rational numbers would be 1 plus 1 into, this would be 1 by 6. And so therefore, your first rational number between 1 and 2 would be 1 plus 1 by 6, that is 7 by 6. The second one would be 1 plus 2 into 1 by 6 is equal to 9 by 6. Sorry, that would be 8 by 6. And furthermore, so you get uh, 9 by 6, and then you get 10 by 6, and then you get 11 by 6. So therefore, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 rational numbers between 1 and 2. Now, one question might pop into your head that is, what of the numbers which cannot be represented in this form? That is p by q, where q not equal to 0. What happens if there are numbers which are not of this form? Or are they even possible? The answer is these numbers are possible and they are called irrational numbers. That is numbers which cannot be represented in the form p by q where q not equal to 0 are called irrational numbers. Irrational numbers would be say root 2, root 3, pi, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, 0 0 0.001. More on this later. Now, we will first take up the case of numbers which look like this. That is root over n. Now, please keep in mind that root over n for all natural numbers need not be irrational numbers. Root over n is irrational for some natural numbers. Now, we look at representation of root over n and to start off with, we'll look at the representation of root by 2, root over 2 on the number line. So if we take the number line, you have 0 here, you have 1 here. Now proceed to make a construction of a vertical line of unit length at the point 1. And then join this point and this point. Now call this point point B. And we'll call this point point A. So triangle 0 A B is a right angle triangle. And so therefore Pythagoras theorem is applicable here. So therefore this is the length of this is 1, and by construction the length of this is 1. So therefore OB whole square is equal to 1 square plus 1 square. This implies OB whole square is equal to 2. And so therefore OB is equal to root over 2. So therefore the length of OB here is root over 2. And if you wish to find out the representation of root 2 on the number line, all you need to do is take a compass and measure out 0 and B and basically bring down this point B to the number line and look at the point that intersects. This point will precisely be root 2 on the number line. So that is as far as the representation of irrational numbers of this form is concerned uh, on the number line. Now keep in mind that you can find the representation of any number root over n of the form root over n if you know the representation of root over n minus 1. Right? Now we look at the expansion of, uh, we, we look at division of numbers. We are coming back to rational numbers for a moment here. So we say we consider the division of 10 by 5. So you have 10 divided by 5. So you get the quotient is 2 and the remainder is 0. 
Now let's consider the division of 1 by 7. So you have 1 divided by 7. First course is 0. So you get 0. You get 1. Because the decimal point you get 0. And then it goes once. And so therefore proceeding like this you have Keep going like this, and you'll find that the decimal representation of 1 divided by 7 is given by 0.14, is a point here, 0.1428571428, and goes on like this. And you notice when you divide 1 by 7 that the remainder never vanishes. That is the remainder never goes to 0. So therefore we can classify division in two ways. That is when the remainder goes to 0 or does not go to 0. Right? That is it never vanishes. Also something interesting that happens when the remainder does not go to 0 is that they are always forming some kind of a pattern that is some kind of a repeating pattern therefore this whole block if you divide further you'll notice that the next two numbers are necessarily 5 and 7 and this is true for any repeating we call this repeating sequence that is any sequence in which the remainder doesn't go to 0 it is noticed that the sequence is forming some kind of a pattern which is repeating that is the block is, block keeps repeating now we will take up uh, from here in the next uh, tutorial so for now this is all thank you